Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Lisa Reynolds, running for State Representative District 36. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you for having me, Colleen. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you are running for this office. Great, thank you. Thank you to you, Colleen, and to the League of Women Voters of, of Portland. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Um, and uh, I think, you know, in a few words, I would say that I'm, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a pediatrician, and I'm an activist. And probably the role that uh, influences me most and prepares me most for this role is my my 20 some years as a primary care pediatrician in Portland where I've met with over boy tens of thousands of families meeting with children and their parents uh, to figure out how to chart the, the best and healthiest way forward in all sorts of circumstances and it certainly has informed me of what is working and more importantly, what is not working for Oregon families. So that was really kind of the first thing that got me thinking of running for office. Can I influence these families' lives at um, a level beyond what I can accomplish in the exam room? And then I became an activist with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense about four and a half years ago after the shooting at Umpqua Community College. Through that work, I've helped uh, train and empower hundreds of women to come to Salem, to meet with their legislators, to testify on bills. You know, I certainly have testified on my share. And that work showed me the power of citizen activist. And, uh, and that influenced me to think about running for office. And I've been working pretty diligently for three years on a bill that would require that guns be locked when not in use. Um, and for the third year, it has failed. So that's pretty um, frustrating for me as a pediatrician, as a parent, and a bill I know will uh, pass, you know, the minute, I'm sorry, will save lives the minute it gets passed. And then when I saw that there are, you know, very few healthcare providers in the legislature, even as 27% of our budget goes to healthcare, I thought we need more medical experts in the legislature. And oh my gosh, I never would have predicted or imagined or you know, dreamed that would we would be in a situation of a pandemic, a situation which you know, as a physician, I've trained for my entire career. We've had a lot of scares in the past, but obviously this is it for the first time in a century. So I feel well positioned and very, very strongly motivated to help with Oregon's response and recovery from the COVID nineteen pandemic. Well, what challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic? to the effective and efficient government or administration of Oregon state government. And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Yeah, make no mistake, every aspect of government, of personal, of private, of public life is going to be dependent on where we are in this pandemic. So obviously the first big challenge is what is the best way to save lives? And Oregon's done a pretty good job on it. I will say as it was unfolding, it all felt a little slower than I would have liked. But um, obviously the proof is in the pudding. And we have at this point effectively flattened that curve so that we can, imagine, uh, we can manage Oregon's sickest patients. And our medical system is not overwhelmed and we're not running out of ventilators like, like the, the, the tragic um, situation we're seeing in New York City. So we've, we've, we've passed that first test, and I'm really, really grateful. And I think the West Coast has clearly been a leader. Um, the next huge step, um, and I know Governor Brown speaking, I think, as, as you and I are talking, is the plan for reopening our society. And that requires several things and several things to consider. First, the safety of Oregonians is the very first thing, and it's why we have shut down our society, our businesses, our schools. Um, how do, we, how do we reopen those in a way that still maintains safety for Oregonians? We certainly need widespread testing, which has been frustratingly lacking in the state, um, testing for both presence of the virus as well as signals of uh, immunity to the virus through antibodies. We need a treatment for COVID-19. I'm a little skeptical about that because we uh, have not been able to find a treatment for viruses like this in the past. And then we need a vaccine. 
So those are the things that absolutely have to happen before we get back to business as usual. But I'm hoping that some interim steps will help us with some economic recovery. We are, you know, we are on, on pace for um, an economic downturn not seen since the Great Depression. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to shift gears here. Uh, traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur next year. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? Well, I, I was at a League of Women Voters meeting about a year ago where, um, where your plan was, uh, was offered, um, you know, a panel of 12 Oregonians from you know, four Republicans, four Democrats, and four who are either non-affiliated or third party. And I think that something like that really makes sense. I think that um, keeping it in the hands of the legislature will continue to um, continue the divide between Republicans and Democrats. And I'd like to see uh, a more well-rounded group of folks, um, citizens, uh, drive that process. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not and why? So I'm a fan of cap and trade. I think it's a great start. We need to, uh, we need to get to cleaner energy uh, for the health and the future of our country, especially for the health of, of children um, and those who are already vulnerable. Um, and I think the cap and trade scheme is a, is a great start. Um, I will, without sounding like a broken record, or I will be sounding like a broken record, I will say that the priority in 2021, 2022, which is what this election is um, seeking to fill the legislature on, uh, will be 100% COVID um, response and recovery. And yes, let's figure out a way to rebuild Oregon so it's better, stronger, cleaner than before, but it all, every policy has to be within the lens of where we are in this pandemic. Mm. Thank you. We have a little less than a minute left, so very quickly. Uh, what is your view of the suggestion that the legislature suspend collecting the taxes that will fund the 2019 Student Success Act? Yes. So the corporate activity tax, which was passed in 2019 and of which I was a great supporter, um, has to be on the table of things that we change in our response and recovery to the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, we are, we've gone from the lowest unemployment in history of 3.3 to the highest unemployment in Oregon's history of close to, we'll be getting close to 20% in the next several weeks. So everything has to be on the table. And if this means that we give corporations um, a two quarter delay in paying that tax so that they can keep more of their employees on the payroll, that is absolutely something that we have to consider. I'm not taking anything off the table right now. Our priority is safety and economic recovery for every single Oregonian. And I would like to see Oregon come out of this stronger than we were in the beginning of 2020. I think that's possible, but it takes a lot of will and a lot of expertise. Thank you very, very much. Uh, this has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.